Blessed the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you. As many as came out of the ark, I established my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant <coughs> that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again, again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read responsively the appointed psalm in your bulletin. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, 
for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from 1 Peter. Christ also also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is the prefigured, now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, is is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Holy Gospel, (laughs) sorry, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can tell Melissa's not here. I don't know my job. (laughs) This first week in Lent, we hear the final scene of the narrative about Noah and his family. The flood and the promise, destruction and hope, despair followed by joy. If we go back to the beginning of this story, we remember that God despaired that creation itself was going against what God had intended. I will often speak of this idea, creation going against God's will, as the world being broken and in sin. So think of it this way. Rain is good and needed. Food grows, beauty erupts when rain comes down and waters them. Yet too much rain and the crops rot or the flowers drown. And even more rain brings destruction to property and human life lost. When God created the world, this was not the intention. Rain was beneficial and only beneficial. Yet because of sin, even the world was acting against God's will or God's intentions. And humanity was killing each other and living with hate and fear rather than love and brotherhood and sisterhood. Sweeping words are used in the story at this point. Wickedness, evil, corrupt, violence. The world and its creatures were acting against their own best interest and against God's will through wickedness, evil, corruption, violence of all types. God saw what was happening and sought to change the direction or trajectory of the world. God wanted to get back to what was intended. God was grieved by the very ones God loves. God is not vengeful, but brokenhearted. We hear this story and we want to believe that our faithfulness will mean that God will not destroy the world in some other horrific fashion, 
but rather it is the story of God's faithfulness and desire that we live God's intention of love, unity, and hope, not how faithful we can be. We can see around us that even as we are faithful and living as best as we can, the world is a mess. Not God's doing, that brokenness still. We too can see how even the world is not as God intended or willed it to be. The story is not about how God sends the evil or all the rest of humanity besides Noah and his family to hell. That's not the point of this story. The point is that God's heart is for God's people to live differently and that the world would not act against that, but be a part of it. And well, that was not happening. There was a crisis in God's heart here. God created all that was and declared it good and very good. And at this point, it's not good and not very good. God was sick, stricken. In our book study, Life After God, the author talks about God's invitation to be a part of God's dreams and hopes for us and the world. God does not dictate or treat us like puppets, nor does God have a set plan that we must follow along. God intends good and invites us into that intention. In the story, God, God enters into the situation in order to move it toward that intention, toward good. God wrestles with judgment and the bone-deep desire for God's people to live without suffering. We have to wrestle here with the idea in the story that God changes God's mind. God blots out the world except for those who are on the ark and the animals. God sees how this has caused suffering and doesn't bring about the hoped-for outcome. The flood, the do-over, doesn't create a new people that do not sin and a new world that isn't broken. So God hangs a rainbow in the sky as a symbol that God will not do this again. He will work in new ways. God vows to work with humanity. He will endure the sinfulness and brokenness of the world and enter into its suffering. God will be patient and his enduring love will last forever. Just as water droplets break open light into a spectacular bow of color, God has broken open God's heart into a spectacular show of love and hope. God's grief spoken of earlier will not bring about judgment and destruction, but rather encouraging humanity and the world towards God's intention and God's faithfulness through it all. I am often frustrated by people using Noah's Ark as decorations for the nursery at church or an infant's bedroom because it glosses over the destruction and the struggle that went on. Right now, I'm rethinking that a little bit. Yes, the destruction was there and that God did bring about judgment, but as an act of wanting so much more for the world and humanity, and that promise of entering into the morass of life and promising not to flood the world again is life-giving for us, God's children. There is joy in that promise, even as the world still works against God's dreams for it. God wants more for us. He will be with us until the end of the age, no matter what. Those who are created in God's image in the beginning are the same ones who are now, even when they sin and move against the will of God, are in God's image. Which brings us to our gospel reading. A story of water, word, and love as the story of Noah is. God has been looking at the brokenness of the world, entering into it and moving God's people toward a particular goal, the kingdom of God where love, unity, and life blossom, and God moves again to change the trajectory of the world. This time, God physically comes into the world. Jesus is born to live in the morass, experience the pain as human, experience love from that perspective as well. This entrance is different because Jesus walks on earth as a human, both God and human. It is hard for us to understand, and it blows our mind that God would love the world enough to seek it out this way. We come to a different story about water and hope and life. Jesus enters into the Jordan and is baptized by John. Jesus doesn't need this baptism like we need it, 
but needs it as a part of the revelation of who he is and what God wants. In Mark's telling of the story of Jesus' baptism, Jesus alone hears the words God speaks. You are my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We become a part of a private moment between the father and the son. God's heart breaks open in the birth and life of God's Son living on earth. The beginning of Jesus' ministry or path to the cross is in the waters of baptism, followed by 40 days of temptation in the wilderness, a crash course in living as a human and understanding humanity from our perspective. Mark doesn't go into detail, but mentions that the angel served Jesus just as Peter's mother-in-law served those in her house when she was healed from a life-threatening fever. And we can see how Jesus' entrance into the story brings struggle in its own right. John is arrested right after. The struggle to move towards God's hope for humanity continues. Over these 40 days of Lent, where we reflect on our own sinfulness and the brokenness of the world, we will also hear God whisper, follow me, live in love, and unity. There is joy to be had. Joy as a feeling, joy as a discipline in our lives, and joy from the hope of salvation. This week, keep the colors of the rainbow foremost in your mind as you go about your daily life. Notice what color, what brings color to your life. Not just color that we can see like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, but depths of joy, fulfillment, hope, and love. Two examples I will give you to help you think about what bringing color into your life might mean. First, the color or depth of joy, fulfillment, hope, and love of children. Like God, we can celebrate when our children live good and faithful lives, and we can grieve when they struggle or get hurt. That brings depth and color to our lives. Second, pets. Pets bring color and depth to our lives. There is no comparison to the love of a pet that a pet gives us each and every day. A dog greeting you with a wagging tail when you return home from a long day. A cat that curls up on your lap bringing warmth and love. There are so many other ways we can think about this, like music, art, prayer, walking, talking with someone we care about, even silence where we focus on our breathing and the breath of God. Seek those things out. Take note of each thing that brings color or depth. I'm receiving the uh, prompts from UTO for things to be thankful for each day in Lent. I signed up in November during that month, and they just started it up again for Lent. And some of the prompts are interesting so far. Give thanks to God for technology, your phone and computers, right? Give thanks for your laundry machines and soap, <laughs> right? But they do bring us depth, right? They can become a part of sin just like anything else, but they do bring color and depth to our life. And when we notice these things, we can give thanks to God for God's promise to be with us always, and for the color God gives our lives. And we, when we gather in this space, notice God's faithfulness to us until the end of the age. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection brings real change in the world. Through Jesus, we can move toward God's intentions in the world. We can come back and ask for forgiveness when we stray, and God will set us on the path again. God's faithfulness endures, and his promise shows us the way. Let us confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop, Douglas Sparks, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President Joseph, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Elkhart, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember <clears throat> and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We ask your prayers for our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, Doug, and C LCA Bishop, Bill. We ask your prayers for the Angl Anglican province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan, St. Paul's, Munster, and St. Thomas, and so Santo Tomas, Plymouth, and Mount Mother Bernadette Hartzau. We ask your prayers for St. John's treasurer. We ask your prayers for our companion diocese missionaries, for the armed forces, for first responders and medical professionals, for peace workers, prisoners, and the unemployed, and for all who have COVID, for Ukraine, Russia, Israel, the Palestinian people, Hamas, the Armenian people, and Azerbaijan. We ask your prayers for Bishop Curry, Ed, Odette, Ed, Beth, Richard, Robin, Denise, Phil, Jan, Adler, Kenny, Jamie, Brian, Joy, Jim, Richard, Brett, Anne, Jane, Kathy, Devin, Douglas, Brian, Mike, <clears throat> Cheryl, Pam, PJ, Scott, Drew, Brent, Will, and all who suffer chronic illnesses, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed St. John the Evangelist, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another 
and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's peace. It is good to be with you this morning. For those of you joining us online, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offering and come into his courts. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who was tempted in every way as we are yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemptional father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God, God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.